Hello, and welcome to Chapter 10 of How to Read and Study the Bible Using the Olive Tree Bible App. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to use the Study Center. This is my favorite part. I have a lot of favorite parts, but this is my most favorite part, and especially the resource guide of the Study Center. So let's just jump right in. Okay, let's go down to the Bible, the bottom of our Bible. Right now I have Matthew uh, 5.1 open to the Sermon on the Mount, and I'm in the 1984 NIV. So if we go down to the bottom and open up the Study Center, we can see right away that our screen splits into two windows. We have our main window on the left side here where our Bible is, and on the right side we have what's called the Study Center. And right now there are four tabs on the bottom of the Study Center, the Resource Guide, the Parallel tab, the Notes tab, and the Lookup tab. By far the, most one, that, that, the one that I use the most is the Resource Guide, and it functions very much um, like a study Bible, only a study Bible on steroids. So in the left side, as I said, we have our Bible text. In the right side, we have resources that we have loaded onto our iPad or whatever device you have, and they're organized by groupings. So we have the commentaries, re related verses, Bibles, maps, charts, images, sermons, outlines, introductions, introductions are often found as well as outlines in your study Bibles at the beginning of a book. Sometimes there's maps in your study Bibles, and then there's the notes, the notes section. So let's just jump into the commentary section, which is the one I use the most. And you'll notice that I have my commentaries listed here, and to the right of each commentary, there's a green circle with a number in the center of it, and that number indicates the number of verses that there are commentaries for, depending on where we are dynamically in our Bible. So, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in Matthew 5, 1 here, at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, if we click on the Expositor's Bible Commentary, we'll notice that we come to another pane where all of our verses that are listed that are related to this verse. So we can just click on the first one, and we're going to start off with the Sermon on the Mount information. Uh, and this is like the beginning of a section of Scripture that's really important. So it gives us some, some introductory comments uh, about the Sermon on the Mount from a big picture point of view before we actually start getting into um, the details of the Sermon on the Mount. So we can go back and go to the next one, and we can start getting into the details like the Beatitudes, and we can just keep going down this list and click on links um, that relate to um, the Sermon on the Mount. And we can just read those commentaries to our heart's content. The Matthew uh, MacArthur New Testament commentary uh, has links. And so if we click on that, again, we're starting at the beginning of a major section of Scripture. So they'll have some introductory context comments. Uh, he'll have the context of it, which is so important. Um, the political context, the religious context. And he'll talk quite a bit about the big picture of the setting before he'll actually get into um, the verse-by-verse -verse commentary, which is really cool. So I can click back here and go back to my MacArthur list, and I can go to any one of these and start reading in more detail uh, commentaries about the Beatitudes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, and then he goes in, he goes in the attitudes, Beatitudes in general, and then he starts going to um, each one of them and discussing them. So that's really interesting. And we can, as you can see, we can click around and navigate both through our Bible and through the commentaries really quickly without taking our eye off of the actual scripture um, itself. So that helps us to keep focused on scripture without taking a lot of our attention and energy away by looking for resources through our bookshelves and, and just, you know, trying to find pages, uh, so uh, that's the resource section. Uh, let's just click on one more here. If I click on the Pillar New Testament Commentary, uh, again, we can just click on the verses and go right to those commentaries for those verses. And it's a great thing. We can go from one commentary to another almost instantaneously and get a whole wealth of information in a short amount of time. Um, not that we're trying to rush our study, but we're actually saving time 
um, on mechanic the mechanics of going through books and looking up books and flipping pages and focusing more on God's word than we are by just trying to find the commentaries that we're looking for. So in the related verses section, this is also an interesting section. Uh, again, in our main menu, we're in the 1984 NIV. So we can look for verses that are related to Matthew 5, 1 and following in these other uh, resources over here. So in the English Standard Bible, for example, we can find in Matthew 5, 1, there's two related verses, Matthew 15, 29. And then we can read that and then we can see the relationship between that and Matthew 5, 1. And they're like cross-references which really gives us the ability to look at the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel of Scripture, and see what the whole New Testament says about a subject. Um, and some of them have a lot of links. So there's another link there, and we can see that if we go down this list, there are lots of links to other passages um, that relate to these passages here. So that's the related verses section. Um, if we want to, we can open up uh, a Bible in this um, open study section and the study section of the resource guide and we can look at translations side by side the NIV 1984 versus the ESV and we can see how close or where they differ in some of their translation choices or we can go in and choose a different one we can choose the contemporary English version for example and compare those side by side if, if we choose to do that um, or you can click the More button here and get some other Bibles that are on my list. Uh, the NIV Greek English Interlinear. This is an interesting Bible. It gives us the Greek on the top. It gives us the English translation in the center row for each verse. And then it gives us the Strong's link for each one of those there. So that'll give us the dictionary definition for the Greek transliteration and the Greek word. Um, so that's kind of interesting. That's uh, a different Bible that you can do side by side. Um, any one of these Bibles, you could do the NIV 1984 compared to the ESV or the NIV 2011 if you want to see what the differences really are between the original uh, 1984 NIV and the 2011 version. You can see that there, there are some differences, but they're not really big earth shaking shattering differences at all so that's the that section and then we have um the map section which i think is really interesting more and more i'm getting interested in learning and what's going on around me or around the people in this section as i'm reading it what was the area like what was the culture like what was the where, where ex actually were they? How far they were they from this town or that town? Or, you know, a lot of times Jesus would travel from one town to another. And I'm, I'm like, and it, what is it like? What does it really look like? So I would look up and I would see it's three miles or 10 miles or, or whatever it is. And some of these uh, maps are really interesting to open up and give you an idea uh, of what the, the area was like in the time of Jesus. Where was G Jerusalem in relationship to Nazareth or Galilee or um, Bethany or any of these other towns? You know, how far did he walk? You know, um, things like that. So it's just interesting information. So all these sections relate directly to wherever you're at in your Bible. So that's the resource guide. I love it. I use the commentary more than any of the rest of it put together. But it's all very interesting. So the parallel section is basically just parallel pass parallel books. Um, you can do this easily in the resource guide as well. But now they have a dedicated section for the parallel. So if you want to compare one Bible against another, that's what this parallel section does. If you want to compare the 1984 NIV um, to... Um, Let's say one of these other Bibles, ESV, Greek, English, interlinear, which you could compare that with the NIV too and see. Uh, again, you have the Greek, you have the English transliteration, and then you have um, the Strong's uh, link that opens up a dictionary.
uh, this actually is the transliteration in, in the center. Excuse me, I'm sorry. And the bottom one is actually the translation. So you have the transliteration in the middle and the translation uh, at the bottom there for each verse. So that's really interesting. So you can compare any one of these uh, Bibles to each other and just read them side by side. Um, the notes section is where you can access all of your notes. And you can access all of your notes in this section either by date or you can filter by title or you can filter by verse. So you can look at uh, your verses up either any one of those ways. And this is a great spot to, to, to go in and read some of your uh, the text of your uh, notes, uh, if you like. Most of these I took during sermons um, or during study times. Um, and uh, so that's what these are. And the last section is the lookup section. And the lookup section is like a great big huge table of contents for not just one of your Bible dictionaries or not just one of your Bible encyclopedias, but all of your resources. So all of your resources combined into one um, table of contents. So you could look up the word Aaron and, you, and it'll show you um, where that word has an article or a definition or some reference to it in all of the resources in your in your um, on your app in in your um, in my case my iPad, so uh, I can look up Aaron in the Naves Topical Bible Index and it will give me links to where the word Aaron is used. That's very useful. Wilmington Guide to the Bible uh, will give me some information about Aaron that way. Um, Hitchcock's Bible Names will give me a little short definition for each word. And uh, let's see, NIV Leadership Bible Notes will have an article on Aaron. And uh, just for another example, International Standard Bible Encyclopedia will have a huge article on Aaron. And it's very interesting. So you can learn a lot from reading those articles, and I just love to go through and read those articles. Um, so that's how that section works. Those are the four sections in the uh, study center. And I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope that you will use them to your blessing. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next lesson.